Deuteronomy 11, verse 11 to verse 12. It said, The Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land whither thou goest to, is a land that was healed and valley drinketh the waters of the rain of heaven. Now look at verse 12, read that for me. And the land which the Lord thy God cares for, for the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even to the end of the year. Somebody is in December already. The first Sunday in December. Will you help me thank your neighbor? Say, thank, I thank God for you this morning. I thank God for you this morning. I thank God you have made the final month of the year. Glory to God. Please, you may be seated. Glory to God. I say glory to God. This pre-Shiloh anointing service and the first Sunday in the month of December, the last month of the year, God will give somebody a bottom point blessing. I say he will give somebody a bottom point blessing. I'd like to appreciate leadership for this privilege to share the word with you this morning. We began very powerfully in the first service with the topic, We Owe God Thanks. We Owe God Thanks. We Owe God Thanks. And we had a great time. In the second service, taken by a resident pastor, he made a lot of emphasis on joy. The Bible speaking in that Isaiah 11, Isaiah 51 and verse 11. It says, Wherefore the redeemed of the Lord shall come unto Zion and come singing, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. It says, Sorrow and mourning shall flee away. So hear me this morning. Whatever represents depression, whatever represents disappointment, Whatever represents hopelessness, you are returning with joy in this service. Amen. If that person is here, let me hear you. Let us say amen. amen. And a statement was made. He said, joy, I mean, thanksgiving is a platform for accelerated next level blessing. You want to change level, give God thanks. As you give God thanks in this last season of the year, God will perfect all that concern you. Whatever has broken down, it will pick up again for your own breakthrough. In case somebody's wondering this service, when will I share my testimony? Like you had those testimonies this morning. Testimony of timely deliver from fire outbreak. Testimony of intervention. Testimony of change of story. You are going to be the next testifier. Say with me, we owe God thanks. Now, there are two sets of people that owe people things. Those that know they are owing, those that pretend to know that they are not owing. Now, have you ever had someone that's owing you, and you tell him, you are owing me? He said, I don't know when I am owing you. You can imagine you walk to your, your landlord comes and knock at your door. He said, where is my rent? He said, which rent? He said, I have paid. He said, your, it has just expired. One year has just expired. But there are some others that have even looked at some. I've met people come to me for prayer and say, the person say you will not pay. There are people like that. But like when you owe rich people, rich people can be very uh, wonderful. They tell you, I'm not paying. Mm, go and do anything. But God said, look, whether you know it or you don't know it, you are owing God thanks. Look at that scripture in Psalms 50 and verse 14. You owe God thanks. I owe God thanks to the police. I owe God thanks. He says, we will pay our vow. And we will pay, we will offer unto God what? Thanksgiving. And pay thy vow to the Most High. You owe God thanks. Some 150 verse 6, it says, let everything that have bread, praise the Lord. Praise is an aspect of thanksgiving. 
Also in Psalm 6 and verse 5, there it says, In the grave, who will give you thanks? That means God expects thanksgiving among the living. Now, why do you owe God thanks? Number one, I'd like you to know he has given you life. If you have life this morning, can I see you wave your hand and say, thank you, Jesus? That means every other thing you are looking for is secondary. Every other thing you are looking for is secondary. You are looking for shoes, secondary. Secondary need. You are looking for house, secondary. You are looking for food, secondary. The first thing is you have life. And if you have life, in fact, the fact that you are hungry means that God will supply your needs. So that you have life this morning. Somebody say, well, I failed that exam. The reason why you are not dead is because you are alive to pass it. You are alive to turn things around. Therefore, this morning, by your thanksgiving, I see you paying your dues in the name of Jesus. Why do you owe God thanks? God owes you and owns what you are looking for. In Psalm 100 and verse 4, he says, we are his sheep. Is the landlord of all landlord. In case your landlord has been threatening you, tell him God is bigger than you. Is the landlord of all landlords. Psalm 100 and verse 4. He said, we are the sheep of his pasture. He owns us. He owns your car. He owns your money in bank. He owns your future. He owns your now. He owns everything that you have. Verse 3. He said, we are the sheep of his pasture. That is why you owe him thanks. He's the Lord of Lord and the King of King. He's the Lord of Lord and the King of King. By your thanks given today, I see your blessings delivered in the name of Jesus. What more? God is the source of all your resources. He's not just your owner. He's the one that sustains you. In Psalms 3, and verse 3, he said, I slept and I woke because the Lord, verse 5, because the Lord sustained me. You did not sustain yourself. You woke up from the bed this morning because God woke you up. Some people did not wake up. Some people had better opportunities. They had better beds. They ate better food. They live in better houses. But yet, they never woke up. You woke up not because you are strong. You woke up not because you have two heads. You woke up because your sustainer is at work. You woke up because God never went to sleep. You woke up because he watches over you from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Will you wave your hand and say thank you? A young man walked one day and as he was walking by the way, an elderly man saw him and said, how are you? He said, not fine. He said, what do you mean? He said, everything is not working. He said, nothing is working. So the elder man looked at him and said, do you, do you wake up this morning? He said, yes, I woke up. He said, number one, you woke up. Waking up is working. He said, number two, is your wife in good shape? He said, yes, she woke up, she's fine. He said, number two, by the time they started the list, it became countless. Listen to me. non thanksgiver are short-sighted. Thanksgiving makes you to see things holistically and makes you to see what God is doing. God has never gone on break. That's why as you give him thanks, I see your blessings sustained in the name of Jesus. What is thanksgiving? If somebody may ask. Thanksgiving... Is mentioning to God back to him his goodness. Is mentioning back to God the goodness you have received, the goodness God is doing, and the goodness you are expecting. In Psalm 60, sorry, in Isaiah 63 and verse 7, he said, I will make mention of your loving kindness. Psalm 63 and verse 7. I will make mention. Of your loving kindness of the Lord and the, and the praise of the Lord according to all the Lord has bestowed upon us. 
and, of, and the greatness of his goodness towards the house of winners. Put the name of your house there. Which he had bestowed on them according to his mercy and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. Has God shown you loving kindness? If in case you don't know he has shown you loving kindness, the will of your enemy has not come to pass. Will you wave your hand again and say, thank you, Jesus. So Thanksgiving is mentioning of his goodness. And listen to me, when you do something for men, they say don't mention. Actually, they want you to mention. They actually want you to mention. And in fact, the more you mention, the more it does more. Listen to me. When it comes to God, it does not have to do something for you to mention. You keep mention, mentioning because God is still doing something. I'd like you to know God is on the processing plant of your life. He's on the production plant of your life. He's making sure that that marriage comes through. He's making sure that that fruitfulness comes through. He's making sure that your health is kept. He's making sure he, he is on the production line of your product of testimony. That's why the Bible is speaking in Philippians 2 and verse 13. It is he that walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God has never gone on strike. Your thanksgiving keep him at work. Your thanksgiving keep him walking. When you give God thanks, you keep him at work in your life. This morning, whatever has not delivered from January, March passed. April went away. September disappeared. August left. And October left. November gone. Somebody say, will it happen? I'm glad to announce to you. As you turn to this mystery of Thanksgiving, I see your blessing delivered. Now listen to me. You can fast and miss. <laughs> you can even pray and miss. In James 4, James 4 and verse 3 and verse 4, he said, They pray and they receive not because they pray and miss. But you cannot give thanks and miss. You know why? Just like you heard in the second service. Just say thank you. Thank you. It attracts blessing from God. You cannot pray and miss. Now, I saw two people in the Bible. I will show you those two right now. They prayed and they switched to the point of thanksgiving. Somebody is switching to the next level of turnaround now. Yeah. Hannah prayed. She has always been going to Shiloh to pray in that first Samuel. And when she prayed, in fact, the name of Samuel means the Lord has answered my prayer. Samuel means answered prayer. But in chapter 2, if you start reading from chapter 2 of 1 Samuel, Hannah began to sing and to glorify God. In verse 9, he said, the, he, he, he said, by strength, he was giving glory to God. By strength shall no man prevail. She was glorifying God. Chapter 1, she prayed. Chapter 2, she was giving thanks and glorifying God. Look at what God did for her in verse 21. The Bible says, and God visited Hannah. Now listen to me. When you pray, God remember you. When you give thanks, God visit you. Now look at when he visited her. And the Lord visited her, Hannah. And, the, and she conceived and bare a son and two daughters. And three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel was kept. When she prayed, Samuel came. When she gave thanks, five children came. I don't know who you are. You are leaving the realm of single to multiplication. I say you are leaving many to mega. If all that person is, let me hear another say amen. The second example is Jonah. Jonah was in the fish belly. Maybe you are in the fish belly right now. You can't move forward, you can't move backward. You are incapacitated in your finance, in your marriage, in your relationship. You are feeling the heat. You can imagine what the fish belly looks like. In Jonah 2, verse 1 and verse 2, the Bible says Jonah, the only thing he could do in the midst of the fish belly, Jonah prayed, Lord, deliver me. Maybe you are praying like that. Lord, deliver me. Shiloh is coming again. Deliver me. Show up concerning me. But the Bible says when he finished praying, look at verse 9. 
He said, and Jonah, verse 9, he said, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice. That is not convenient. It doesn't look like it. I will sacrifice unto thee the voice of thanksgiving. And I will pay that, that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Now look at the next verse. What God did after thanksgiving. Now read for me everybody. And the Lord spake unto the fish. Vomit Jonah. Vomit Jonah. I say vomit Jonah. And listen to me. This is the miracle. This is not a small fish. This is a whale. Whale don't come around, around the, sh the shore of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the ocean. Because if it come, it may not be able to have enough flotation to go back. But this time, because God spoke to the, to the, to the fish, the Bible says, and the fish came to the land, vomited Jonah. I don't know what is still hanging in your life. By your thanksgiving in this service, and as we go into Shiloh, every hanging blessing, I see vomited. Your promotion vomited. Your miracle vomited. Anyone that's held back your blessing, we command their release in the name of Jesus. Any blessing that's been kept back, they are hereby released in the name of Jesus. So thanksgiving open you to a wall of wonder. Thanksgiving, there's no mistake in thanksgiving. It opens you to a wall of wonder. You see, thanksgiving is one of those foolish things of God that makes great things on the earth. It's one of those foolish things. Je Jesus came to the grave of Lazarus in that John 11 and verse 41 and 42. He said, and Jesus gave thanks. And Jesus gave thanks. And Lazarus changed position. Also Jesus in John 6 and verse 6 to verse 11. Five loaves and two fishes among thousands. And he gave thanks. And the Bible said, and the multitude were filled and 12 baskets remained. Whatever looks like scarcity around your life today is turned to surplus by the wonders of thanksgiving. By your thanksgiving. Listen to me. That's why you must be deliberate about your thanksgiving. Just like you are deliberate about your prayer, be deliberate about thanksgiving. Do you know thanksgiving is a weapon of your victory? In case you are losing battle, in case it's like there's nowhere to turn, turn to thanksgiving. We saw that in 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 21 to 23. As they began to sing and to praise, they were singing the song, giving thanks to give thanks to the Lord. For his good and his mercy endure forever. You are either singing thanksgiving. You are either declaring thanksgiving. You are either praying thanksgiving. Anyone you do is provoking the forces in thanksgiving. And by this thanksgiving today, I see your blessing deliver in the name of Jesus. Every time you pay your due of thanksgiving, God is committed to be at work. Every time you pay your due of thanksgiving, God is committed to do what is promised. What he has promised you in this remaining part of the year, I see God deliver to someone in the name of Jesus. Say with me, I will give him thanks. Nothing will take away my thanksgiving. Thanksgiving it must not be ev eventual or seasonal. Thanksgiving must be a way of life. For you to live a life of wonder, for you to experience wonder in your finances. Experience wonder as some people are serving God, but they don't give thanks. Like it was said in the first service and the second service. Our fathers in this commission are not pretenders. I've been with them several times. You've been in the car. They say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You hear Papa say that? Glory. On the dining table, just eating, you could hear up to 15 times. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, intermittently. That means Thanksgiving is digesting the food. Glory to God. As you give God thanks, I see the hand of God at work in your life. Listen to me, God is at work, but Thanksgiving perfects his work. God is at work. We saw that in Luke 15, Luke 17, verse 15 to verse 19. Luke 17, verse 15 to 19. He said, why there no time cleanse? God demands thanksgiving. God demands your gratitude. God demands your return to say, I thank you. That's why if you wake up from your bed every morning, 
Even if you don't know what else to say, before you bring a long list of prayer requests, tell him, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for another day. Thank you for the journey message. Thank you for the, for the blessing that we see. Listen to me. There is no time in your life that God is doing nothing. No matter how bad the circumstance is, there's always allowance for thanksgiving. As you give God thanks, I see God's work magnified and perfected in the name of Jesus. We must get to understand quickly that from this word, that life is not a right but a gift. It's not a right. You can claim right in court. You can claim right in the police station. You can claim right with your neighbor, but don't claim right with God. Don't claim right with God. Some people claim right so much that they cast as passion at God. Say, God, where have you been to? Don't you know me? They say you have my address. They say you know the number of my hair. But look at what I've been going through. Can you see the other person? You have done this for him. You have done that for him. When will you show up now? Show up if you want to show up now. If you don't want to show up. Some even threaten God. God, if you, if you don't, God say me. But somebody is repented this morning. So it's not a right. It's a gift. Say life is a gift. I cannot hear. Say life is a gift. That's why in Jeremiah 1 and verse 5, God spoke to Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I have ordained you as a prophet to your nation. That means your contribution was not required. I determined your destiny before you took your first breath. I, you are only walking into my plan. You are only walking into God's plan. He said, I slept and I woke because the law sustained me. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7, he said, we have these vessels these treasures in eighteen vessel, that the excellency of his power may be of God and not of us. That means whatever you have, whatever you will have, whatever you, potential and skill you may be, it is of God and it deserves the glory. I see God taking the glory this morning. I see God taking the glory today. We must also understand that eternal life is not an achievement. Ephesians 2 and verse 8. You are not saved because your father is a pastor. In fact, hear me. There are some people, their house is right opposite the church, but they are not saved. In fact, they even direct you. Those days when, before we moved to Canaan land, we had all the streets filled. Even the mosque, people go inside the mosque because there's no space. There are people there that are not saved, but they direct people. They even bring their chairs out for people to be saved. In that Ephesians 2 and verse 8, it says we are saved by grace. It's not of our own works, but it is a gift of God. There's nothing to brag about. You are just a beneficiary of the gift of God. That will help to humble us. You see, what I've discovered about Thanksgiving is this. The more you give thanks, the more you are delivered from pride. The more you give God thanks, the more you are delivered from pride. When you are finding it too difficult to say, Lord, I acknowledge you. Lord, I glorify you. You are provoking. And listen to me. The way God re responds to pride is the same way he responds to praise. God responds to praise with, with good things. He responds to pride with anger. So you give him thanks quickly, instantly, in order for him to be glorified. This morning, for all he has done in your life, for all he's doing in our lives, for all he will do at Shiloh 2023, we say, thank you, Jesus. We must understand the principles of the kingdom. And one of the principles of the kingdom is success, exploit, achievement, they are not by our doing, they are the engracement of the Lord. It is an engracement. It is an engracement, not an achievement. In that 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10, Paul said, I am the least of all the apostles, from verse 9. But I have confessed. He said, why? I am what I am by the grace of God. How many are the beneficiary of his grace? Let me see your hand. Wave your hand to him again. Say with me, thank you, Jesus. So, we must keep our thanksgiving on in order to keep God at work. 
we must keep our thanksgiving on in order to keep God at work. Remember I was saying in the second service, joy, you see, thanksgiving begins with an attitude of gratitude. It's an attitude of gratitude. An attitude, you see, people that don't thank men well, they will li likely have it difficult to thank God they cannot see. It's an attitude of gratitude that makes for greatness. It's an attitude of gratitude that makes for higher altitude. This time, I see you going to a higher altitude. It doesn't matter what is happening around you right now. When you celebrate the God of all flesh, when you celebrate what is written, whatever is happening expires. In that 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16 to verse 18, it says your life affliction is but for a moment. I'd like you to read verse, verse 15, verse 15 of that same chapter. It says grace is released. Look at it. It says grace, grace to go through is released when you give time. It says for all things are for your sake that the abundance of grace might through thanksgiving. So grace flows when thanksgiving is on. Grace flows when thanksgiving is on. You see, when life is without grace, friction continues and cracks. But look at what happened. He said, when grace is released by thanksgiving, he said, for all things. Look at verse, verse 16, verse 14, verse 16 now. He said, for, for this cause we fed not, because grace is flowing. For this cause we fed not, though our outward man perish, our, yet our inward man is renewed. How many days? Every day, because there's grace. And if you read further down, he says, our light affliction is yet for a moment. It worked for us far exceeding great, exceeding weight of glory. Somebody, whatever you are going through now, is turning for your glory in the name of Jesus. So it may look like an hopeless situation. The Bible says, hope differ, make the heart sick. Proverbs 13 and verse 12. It makes the heart sick. It makes it sick. Hope differ, makes the heart sick. You are, it looks like your case looks like hopelessness. But hear me, the word of God said, to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. There is hope. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 4. I said there's hope for that family. There's hope for your destiny. I had a testimony in Canaan land. This family had nothing to eat. And all they could do that night was to drink water and they blessed it and gave thanks and went to sleep. As they woke up in the morning without calling anyone, they found bags of rice, food, waiting right there at their door. I don't know who is waiting for a supply of heaven. As you give God thanks, the heaven will show up concerning you. In case you are in the wilderness right now, there's still hope for you. There is hope for you this morning. Your case is not closed yet. In, I, in Isaiah 51 and verse 3, he said, even if your case looks like a wilderness, and uh, it's a comfort for the Lord will comfort Zion. I uh, will comfort the, all our waves places. And he will make our wilderness like the garden of Eden. And our desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. That means if thanksgiving is not missing, God will keep walking. If thanksgiving is not missing, your miracle is on the way. I don't know who you are this morning. God of all flesh is performing your own desire miracle in the name of Jesus. Say one more time, I thank you, Lord. So don't allow your circumstance to overwhelm you. Give God thanks. Listen to me. The circumstance of life wants to gain your attention. The circumstance of life wants to steal your thanksgiving. But when you remove your eyes from the circumstance that will soon expire, and you look out to the God that is eternal, then things start changing. As you give him thanks the remaining days of this month, and as we go into Shiloh, you will return from Shiloh as a testimony. If that person is here, let me hear that is amen. Whatever heaviness came in with you here this morning, as we go into the anointing, that anointing will break every yoke. Your joy shall be restored. Depression shall be taken away. Every evidence shall be broken. In the name of Jesus. Thanksgiving is what we need to do to make our desire turn around. As we give him thanks, I say turn around for us. Now quickly this morning, we look at 
The virtues embedded in the mystery of thanksgiving. What are the virtues? What are the things you should expect when you give God thanks? According to that psalm, we look at it from Psalm 92, from verse 1 to verse 2. It says, a good thing to give, Psalm 92, verse 1 and verse 2. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing his praises unto the name O Most High. To show forth his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness at evening time. Then it began to reel out the benefits and the virtues of thanksgiving. It began to reel out the benefit from verse 10. It says, when we give God thanks, but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn, like the horn of the unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see the desire of my enemies, that my enemies, and my ears shall hear the desires of the wicked that rise up against me. If you believe that, let me hear you. Let it, amen. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, and he, he shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the cause of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness with him. God of righteousness will show his righteousness in your life. 1984. April 1984. A miracle took place in this commission and I was there that day. That was when in Kunamina's College, Kaduna, we had, that was the day these books were launched, the first two books, Miracle Seed and Law of Faith. Now, what happened? There's a man called Yemi Ayodele, I can still remember that name. He came, it was in the midst of the uh, event, and they asked him to come. It was a three days event. The theme of the event is, it was Easter time. It is finished. Now, he came to minister special number. And the ministration was a Thanksgiving ministration. He came with a woman, she had half row, and I, that woman, her voice was bar, 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 baritonic. She sings bass. And when she began to sing, they began to sing, the man carried guitar, a bass guitar, and began to play. Dun, 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 dun. Now, this is the song. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good to me, and his mercy is endured forever. Now, the way I'm singing it now is too good. I've never had a song like that in my life, up to now. It was not studio worthy at all. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for me, and his mercy is endured forever. That was how it was. But hear me. Miracle was taking place. As they were singing, I had my physics teacher there. She was there. Most of my teachers in school were in that, were in that fellowship. And Ms. Oguturi, he's a wife of a, a, a pastor in Kaduna now. She was healed of her eye challenge. I don't know who you are in this service. Whether your voice is studio worthy or is choir unworthy, you will give God thanks anyhow. Will you give God thanks anyhow this morning? Will you give God thanks anyhow this morning? Will you give God thanks anyhow? Nothing will steal your thanksgiving. I said nothing will steal your thanksgiving. In case your landlord say, I'm waiting for you to come back after church, go will surprise your landlord. Did you not hear me at all? I said, I, in case, you know some landlord will wait for you. He said, I'm waiting for him to come. As you're coming from church, I will lock the house. Before you get home, God of thanksgiving will show up concerning you in the name of Jesus. Say with me, thank you, Jesus. We thank him for what he has done. We thank him for what he's doing. And we thank him for what we're expecting him to do. God will do great things in your life. From the scripture I've read in Psalm 92, what are the virtues of thanksgiving? Number one, supernatural strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. He, he gives strength in the midst of discomfort. He gives strength in the midst of brokenness. In case everything is broken down, mental strength, emotional strength, financial strength, receive strength by this Thanksgiving today. Number two, he brings about fresh oil. Fresh oil. He anointed my hair with fresh oil. In 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 15 we read, grace answers by thanksgiving. 
Grace answers by thanksgiving. When grace is at work, grace is the grace of life. When grace is at work, every friction is taken out of the way. When grace is at work, sweat disappears. When grace is at work, favor shows up. Everywhere you have been sweating, receive unction of oil, fresh oil by this service in the name of Jesus. Do you know somebody here that you have been failing from January? That it is sure you failed. March you failed. October you failed. Oh, 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 oh. This last month, God will do something that will make all the failures swallow by your record. God will give you a result that will swallow all your failure. Now, number three. Great. What more? Virtue of thanksgiving. Of the mystery of thanksgiving. Triumph over your enemies. Triumph over the battle of your life. Verse 11. You triumph over all the battles. Battle the one you know, the one you don't know. When you give God thanks, the wicked does not rejoice over you. When you give God thanks, the shackles, the, the traps of the wicked is broken. When you give God thanks, it turns the wicked back to themselves. When you give God thanks, it turns their weapon against themselves. By your thanksgiving today, I see you returning with victory in the name of Jesus. That battle over your health, that battle over your children, that battle over your finances, you are returning victorious from Shiloh in the name of Jesus. Number four, by thanksgiving, you are scaling new heights. You scale new heights by thanksgiving. You don't remain stagnant. Thanksgiving, like I had in the second service, it is what accelerates you into next level. You, you see, in that Habakkuk 3, and verse 17 to verse 19, he said, although the fig tree do not blossom, and there's nothing working, everything is dead. He said, yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Then look at the next thing. He said, the Lord will give you the hinds feet. He said, the Lord, he said, the Lord is thy strength. I will make your feet like the hinds feet. Now, the, 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 the hind is the deer. What does it do? It doesn't run like any other animal. The, it, what it does, is every other animal runs on the ground. The deer runs and leaps. It leaps three meters high. So all that you are doing on the ground, the deer has jumped over it. You gain unusual speed. I don't know who has left you behind in January. And you are even seeing their brake light. Suddenly in this December, the year, this month that God is crowning you with goodness, they will see your brake light. I did not, that person is not in this service. I said, the one that has laughed at you, the one that has mocked you, the one that said, look at Mama Church, Baba Church, yes, winner, Mama winner, they will see your brake light before the end of this year. So shall it be. What number? Number five, you'll be fat and flourishing. That is, you are robust and evergreen. You are robust. They are not asking you, what are you doing? How are you doing it? You, you see, there are some testimony that you need to share. There are some testimony that share themselves, fat and flourishing. That when you appear, they don't need to ask. They just salute the, the God that you serve. That will be your testimony this time. You will scale good, new height in your finances. Scale new height in your career. Well, number six. Still bring forth fruit in old age. That means you are ever relevant. In case they have told you your case is closed. In case they have told you you can never amount to anything. Get ready after this Thanksgiving. I see you bringing about result on every side. Number seven is divine presence. When you give God thanks, you secure his presence. Psalm 100 and verse 4. We secure his presence. You enter his gate with thanksgiving. And nothing die in his presence. In his presence, there's no mountain in his presence. In his presence, everything works in his presence. In that Hebrew 9 and verse 4, the Bible says, And the rod of Aaron boarded in the presence of the Lord. That means, as you give God thanks, make it deliberate before the end of this month. Give God quality thanks. Over that thing you have been praying about. Over that thing that is a concern. And I see you return as a living testimony. Will you wave your hand and give him thanks? Will you wave your hand and give him thanks? Thank him. Glorify him. 
Let him hear your thanksgiving for what he has done, for what he is doing, for what he will do. Give him thanks. Give him glory. Make it intentional. Make it audible. Only that one man return. Only that one man return. And he perfected all that concern him. That will be your portion in this service. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Without God being your source, you cannot be resourced on the earth. When you break a branch of a tree, you cut it off, it's only time it will soon go dry. Until you keep to your source in God, everything, whether it's your potential, you call it, your skill, you call it, your connection, you call it, your money, it remains limited. You need to connect with the unlimited God to, be all, to become all resourceful on, the, on, on this earth. You need to be connected with this God as your Lord and Savior so that you become a man of all season. You'll be fat and flourishing. That means no matter the season, you are ever relevant. Season don't determine your destiny. The God on your inside determines your destiny. I want to pray for somebody in this service this morning. You are tired of running from pillar to post. Yes, you have been religious. Yes, you have a Christian name. Yes, you have been baptized. But you've not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That is the connecting point to your source. Until you make God your source, you cannot be resourced as expected. Jesus said in that John 15 and verse 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branch. He said, except you stay with the branch, I mean, with the, with the vine, the best you can do is nothing. One million times zero is zero. No matter your gift, times zero is zero. You, want, you don't want to live a zero life. Even as the year is rounding up, you want to make it right with God. I want to pray for that man, that woman. If you are here this morning, you are saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. I want to make right with my God. I want to have a relationship with him. That man, everyone bow your heads as I pray. I want that man, I want that woman, put your right hand on your chest. Now, you are also here in this service this morning. You have given your life to Christ sometime, but out of pressure you lost it. You are saying, Pastor, I want my joy restored. I want my peace restored. Put your right hand on your chest. Now, lift up your left hand, your other hand to Jesus, and just talk to him right now. Lift up your other hand to Jesus, and just talk to him right now. Tell him, Jesus, have your way in my life. I cannot hold back anymore. Now, if you are doing this, Everyone that want me to pray for you, give your life to Christ. I want you to stand to your feet with your right hand on your chest. Rise to your feet right now. God bless you. 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 What a joy this morning. This is the way to enter the last month of the year. Now everyone doing that, I'd like you to stand to your feet, that man and that woman. Make your way right here. I'd like to pray for you. The ushers will help you out. You are saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ. I don't want to live a life of struggling. I don't want to remain the way I used to be. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. The center and the center of my life. Church, I told you I'm clapping for them. Everywhere you are, you cannot afford to hold back. The Holy Ghost is already speaking to you. You cannot afford to hold back. Let God have his way. Don't cast your vote to darkness. Cast your vote to light. Jesus is the way. The truth and the life. When you find him, you find the way. When you find him, he makes a way for you. He's a way maker. Now that man, you are just making your decision. Make your way right here this morning. This is your day. Church, keep clocking for them as they come. I'm waiting for you. Now at the count of five, if you are coming, I want you here. The ark of Noah was open. And some were laughing. Some said, well, let it. It's just a, it's just a fun. But when the rain began to fall, they couldn't enter the ark. The ark is open this morning. There's fire on the mountain. Don't allow this moment to pass you by. Wherever you are, let this moment be your own moment. Let Jesus be your Lord and Savior. I'm counting one. Church, keep clapping. Keep clapping. Somebody's making a decision for Jesus this morning. You cannot throw away invitation from your father. Two. Three. If you're coming, make your way right here. And four, I'm still waiting for you. Now everyone in front, while you're still coming, I'd like you to bow your heads and put your right hand on your chest again. 
Say with me this prayer. Say with me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Today, I surrender my life to you. Save me. Deliver me from the power of sin and Satan. Cleanse me by your blood. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Now let me pray for you. Father, I pray for this precious soul this morning. The grace that brought them, the same grace keep them. Every handwriting of hell and darkness over this destiny is broken right now. Peace, joy, and the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon you from this moment. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Please, I'd like you to look at these officials. Just go with them. Church, I told you I'm excited. Are you still giving God thanks? Now, in a moment, we are going to the anointing session. From that scripture, we read in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 15, it says, grace is released by thanksgiving. Grace. So as you partake of this anointing this morning, every yoke of heaviness is broken right now. As you partake of this anointing, somebody will be here right now. As, rise your feet and begin to declare what you want to deliver. See on this table. Go ahead and declare what you want to receive. Joy is imparted. Joy is released. Joy is released. By this anointing, joy is released this morning. By this anointing, somebody, heaviness is taken out of the way. The spirit of joy and gladness is released for somebody. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, the, our Father, the Apostle of this Commission, has sent Shiloh anointing oil to us. And as you are anointed with this oil, receive your Shiloh testimony already. So be seated in expectation as soon as you're anointed. You stand to your feet, choir will be singing high praise, and we anoint ourselves. I saw a living God, oh, even the devil knows, sin not true, oh. I saw a living God, oh, everybody know, say now you did it, no. Hey! I saw a living God, oh, even the devil knows, say not true, oh. I saw a living God, oh, everybody know, say now you did it, no. I saw a living God, oh. Jehovah 